Hi guys, in this lecture I'll explain to you the fast start failover. After you finish this lecture, you should be able to do the following. Describe the advantages and the drawbacks of fast start failover. Describe the architecture of the fast start failover. Configure the fast start failover. Define the fast start failover conditions. Enable the fast start failover. Start the FSFO observer. And disable the fast start failover. If you have a data guard implementation with two databases, let's see what you will do if the primary database has a failure. If the primary database becomes unavailable, you, the DBA, will be reported. In response, you will have to perform the failover procedure yourself. To change the role of the standby database from the standby role to the primary role. This manual procedure could involve long downtime because the clients are waiting till the DBA performs the failover. For some business applications, this is fine, but for other critical applications, this downtime is not acceptable. This is where the FSFO helps. It automates the failover procedure. So, let's see how the FSFO works. If you want to configure the FSFO, beside the database members in your data guard configuration, you must have an extra computer. This computer will host a process named as the observer. The process keeps communicating with the predefined databases in your FSFO configuration. If the primary database becomes unavailable, the observer will wait for a period of time defined in a setting called fast start failover threshold. If the primary database stays unavailable for that period, the observer will automatically start the failover. No manual procedure. No one is waiting for you to do the job. The data guard observer will take care of the task. Let me explain further about the FSFO option. FSFO is an OCI client that runs from the DGMGRL command line. When you kick off the observer, you do that from the DGMGRL command line prompt. That DGMGRL session that you use to start the observer will stay active as long as you want the observer up and running. FSFO automatically invokes a failover based on roles or conditions that you define. I talked about one of them in the previous slide, which was if the primary database becomes unavailable for a predefined period of time. I will talk later about other conditions that you can define in FSFO. If any of those conditions take place, the FSFO will automatically start failover. If the FSFO starts a failover, it doesn't allow the failed primary database to open for read-write operations to normal users. This is to protect you from having a split brain situation. You can configure the FSFO to automatically reinstate the failed primary database if it becomes available after a failover. FSFO should be running on a separate system, not on any of the data guard database systems. If the FSFO goes down, the whole data guard configuration will suspend. That is why FSFO should be run from a separate system. Actually, technically speaking, FSFO will work fine if you run it from one of the data guard database systems. However, if that database system goes down, the entire data guard configuration will hang. For that reason, FSFO is considered as a single point of failure 
for a database configuration. And ideally, it should be installed on a highly available system. To use FSFO, the broker must be configured in your DataGuard implementation. Also, the flashback database must be enabled on all the DataGuard databases. Standby ReadyLog files must be configured in all the databases in your configuration. Install the DGMGRL command line interface on the observer computer and configure the tnsnames.ora file in the observer system so that it can connect to the primary database and to the pre-selected target standby database. You can define rules on which the observer will take decisions to fail over. This slide is showing you a list of the rules or conditions that you can define in the data guard configuration. In the top of the list is the connectivity to the primary database. The observer will kick off the failover if the observer and the target standby database lose their connections with the primary database but the observer and the standby database are still communicating. Other conditions that you can define are data file offline, corrupted control file, corrupted dictionary, inaccessible log file, stuck archiver, and specific ORA errors. Also, you have the option to make an application initiate the observer to start the failover. This could be useful if you want to build a customized failover solution. To list the conditions defined in the FSFO, use the command show fast start failover. You can request the observer to initiate a failover directly from your application. For that, use the initiate fs failover procedure in the dbms underscore dg package. You can pass a message text to the procedure that will be displayed in the observer log file and the primary database alert log file. Now, I will show you the procedure to configure the FSFO in your environment. First, you have to tell the FSFO which standby database will become the primary database when the failover is triggered. This should be done by setting the property fast start failover target. You define this property in both the primary database and the standby database. You may wonder why we would define it in the standby database. This is because you may need to fail over back to the old primary database. This property is optional if your data guard implementation is composed of only two databases, but it is mandatory if you have more than one standby database in your configuration. Secondly, you define the fast start failover threshold. As I said earlier, this property specifies the number of seconds you want the observer and target standby database to wait before the observer starts the failover. If your data guard is running in maximum performance mode, there is a possibility of losing some data after a failover. You can tell the FSFO, if you are triggered to fail over to the standby database, take a measurement of the data that could be lost. If that data is greater than a specific amount, do not fail over. This threshold is configured using the property Fast start failover lag time. This property specifies the amount of data in seconds that the target standby database can lag behind the primary database. 
If the lag between the primary database and the standby database is within that many seconds, a fast start failover will be allowed. This property is only used if your data guard configuration is operating in maximum performance mode. Its default value is 30 seconds and the lowest possible value is 10 seconds. The other property that you need to consider for the FSFO is fast start failover PMY shutdown. If you set this property to true, the old primary database will automatically shut down after a successful failover. The last property that you need to consider is the fast start failover auto re in state. As its name implies, if you set this property to true, the former primary database is automatically reinstated as a standby database when the connection to it is re-established. After setting the FSFO configuration properties, you can enable it. To do that, issue the enable fast start failover command while connected to any database in the broker configuration. To start the observer with dgmgrl, issue the command start observer on the observer computer. The dgmgrl command line prompt on the observer computer doesn't return because the observer is a continuously executing process. If you want to stop it, open a new dgmgrl session and issue the stop observer command. Some DGMGRL properties cannot be changed until you disable the FSFO. If you want to disable the FSFO, stop first the observer process, then disable the FSFO configuration. In conclusion, FSFO is a must for some critical mission applications. It is, however, easy to configure and enable, but it needs you to allocate a separate computer in your configuration for the FSFO observer. By completing this lecture, you should have learned how to do the following. Describe the advantages and drawbacks of fast start failover FSFO, Describe the architecture of the FSFO, configure the FSFO, enable it, start it, and finally, you learned how to disable it. The next lecture is a practice. You will have hands-on experience on configuring the FSFO in the data guard configuration. Thanks for staying with me, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.